Hello everyone and welcome back into the final episode of our how to win a domination game tutorial turns 151 to victory uh, We dominate in this video. We dominate pretty hard. It's a good time. I hope you enjoy it Just a reminder before we hop in though that this game Gave me a platform to talk about some of the principles of a domination game with you guys to kind of show you some of them But it's by no means a full accounting of all the possible ways to win a domination game or all the possible strategies to use There are so many strategies We just either didn't get to use or didn't need to use that we will talk about in the next domination gameplay So don't leave this tutorial thinking man. I love using giant death robots. He didn't mention giant death robots or um, He didn't build that many aerodromes. How do I choose between? Between fighters and bombers. We will talk about all of that stuff in another domination video. I will make sure the next one we do includes strategies and things that we haven't covered in this one. Also, before you hop in, just a reminder, we stream on twitch.tv slash Van Bradley all the time, three or four times a week. We got Civilization in the evenings, Football Manager in the mornings. It's a great time. I hope you will head over there and check out the live stream. Also, let me know what you'd like to see in the comments below. Hit the like and subscribe button. I hope you're ready for a domination game. Let's rock! Mecha has got all smart with us and has decided to put walls up here. How dare they? But with a 36 uh, defense score, that's not very high. So I'm gonna try and get this field cannon here to chip away at the walls while we wait for nationalism to come along while we wait for a few more units. We're not losing loyalty in this city for 96 turns as it stands right now, so I'm feeling pretty good about taking our time here with Mecha. So we built our first spy here, and because we built the spy in a city that has Victor, and Victor has to have the Embrasure promotion, which he does right here to give military units an extra promotion when they are built. So between that, we get a free um, boost to our spy here, a free promotion, which is very, very helpful because that means you don't have to send it out to siphon funds. Recruit Partisans, fun, but not very helpful. Uh, mission Completion, fun, but not very helpful. Breach Dam, fun, but not very helpful. I suppose on the whole, we will go Linguist to reduce the time it takes to complete some missions and send her out to siphon some funds. I have this Caravel here. I'm gonna send it into this middle area here and see if we can pick off any trade routes coming on the ocean from Cairo. Another day, another field cannon. Bada bing, bada boom. We should be good here. Can I just pick off the crossbow? Ooh, maybe. Ah, oh, yeah, crossbow's down. Awesome. There is nowhere my spy can go to siphon funds right now. I have not met a city with a commercial up, so I am going to send the spy to Geneva to fabricate a scandal and start kicking some other people's envoys out. These double field cannons will take out the walls really quickly. What's good to know here is that this legion can safely sit on this tile and get attacked a bunch of times because if I pillage on a farm, you get health. So knowing what tile pillages give you what uh, boosts is really, really helpful because it's good to know if you have a bunch of units sitting on farm tiles and they get attacked, you can pillage for health to kind of delay a little bit and give your field cannons more time to attack the city. I'm going to try to keep Mecha here, but Mecha has three, three population and Sanaa has 12 population pushing the loyalty pressure against this. So I'm gonna have to either increase the populations here really quickly or take Sanaa really quickly. It is okay to raise cities too if you're not gonna be able to keep them because if you take them and can't keep them, all that happens is that they just go back to being a free city and you have to take them all over again. All right, Terracotta Army is ours. This was not necessary at all, but kind of just a fun build during a domination game. The Terracotta Army is going to give us a buttload of promotions to all of our units. If you go here, Terracotta Army. All current units gain a promotion level. Our ar all archaeologists from the owner may enter foreign lands without open borders. Must be built on flat grassland or plains adjacent to an encampment. So mainly why that's helpful is not for the archaeologists. It's for the promotions to all of your units. So you usually don't want to build it unless you already have quite a few units on the map that you are hoping to promote. All right, for our ranged promotions, we are all going to go zone of control, hopefully down to expert marksman at the next promotion level. So one sneaky thing I'm going to do here is I want to start getting a few pot shots in on these walls just to start working this city down a little bit. I'm actually going to save this promotion because the promotion is going to heal me. So if I attack here once, take a little bit of the walls down, they attack me once, I can use this promotion to heal, and I'll have gotten an extra attack on the walls for pretty much free. And that's the way I'm going to look at it. Hey, it's Gorgo! We've met Gorgo. That took a while. 
Um, so we've met Gorgo now. Uh, she is going to get killed just like everyone else in this game. Gorgo is interesting though because Gorgo is typically one that, if you're not careful, will try and attack you in the early game. So I am pretty happy we didn't get put right next to Gorgo. I wouldn't mind heading towards nationalism here to build core units. We'll talk about core units when we can when we can grab them, but I think that's a good next step for us. We're probably not going to boost it if we haven't already. Civil engineering is good as well. So is opera and ballet. All three of these are valid choices. I think nationalism though will help speed this domination game along. All right, we kicked <laughs> we kicked the Khmer out of Laventa, so our our homeland is safe once more. We now have a legion down here ready to take anchor. Tom, this frigate is just just keeping this health down. So whenever we get a a, a unit here, we are good to go. With this uh, four promotion legion, I think this is a good one to upgrade to a musketman. We don't have unlimited gold um, to be doing upgrades right now, but if you're going to upgrade anything, the uh, the four promotion units are really, really helpful. Okay. <laughs> Gorgo's already <laughs> terrified of us. Woohoo! That's awesome. Uh-oh, big flood. Um, on the whole, not too bad. We do have to rebuild the niter mine, though. So we're going to take Sanaa here with just these two hits with the Curacers. Or the Legion, sorry, not the Curacers. God, I mean, I'm going to be a little bit tricky here. This field cannon has three promotions. This one has two, right? So this one has a promotion here. We're going to go to Zone of Control. Now, I have a great general here whose ability is to give a promotion to a unit. So what I'd like to do here, who has the most amount of experience? This one's already halfway to level four. This one's not anywhere close to level four. So we're going to use this here. And soon enough, we're going to have two field cannons that can attack twice per turn. Keep Sanaa, repair everything that needs repairing. Now here's our play on Anchor Tom. We are going to use the frigate. We're just going to get the city down. We are going to take Anchor Tom with the musket. That is awesome. <laughs> Three, holy sight, a battering ram, all kinds of a, all kinds of a party happening here at Anchor Tom. We're going to keep Anchor... Can you stay in the city? Did I click keep? Yeah, cool. That was a misclick. I don't know how that happened. Anyways, we have captured the capital uh, with Anchor Tom. So we do not need these cities. These cities are useless to us. Well, not useless, but like we don't need them to win. If we go to our domination victory screen here, we have conquered the capital of the Khmer. So because we only need the capitals and I don't want to waste time or energy taking these cities, we can now go and try to make peace with the Khmer and see if they'll give us anything. Five for 30 turns. Will you give us the oranges? And you'll give us the citrus. And you'll seed all the cities? Good. Done. So that way, we're making peace. We can ignore the Khmer now. They're all good. We have their capital, and everything is awesome. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of double great general cheek here. We're going to upgrade this field cannon to expert marksman for the additional attack. And then we are going to use this great general here to form a core out of the unit, which makes it a more powerful unit. Once we hit nationalism, we're going to talk about how you guys make core units. But for now, just boom. This guy's got two stars. It's the equivalent of like combining two field cannons together. So this guy's super powerful and can attack twice per turn. So I think the walls in Cairo don't stand a chance. What is this archer doing? What? This is like Charmander looking at a Charizard and just getting punched in the face. Oh, jeez. Well, that was a little unfortunate. I'm going to heal these legions up before we continue. Ooh, grab the Niter. Yeah, yeah. We like Niter. I usually prefer Urban Warfare here instead of Zweehander, but to each their own, whatever you want. If there's a lot of anti-cav units on the map, you might want to take Zweehander. But Urban Warfare will help us take cities a little bit easier. Gonna build a monument in these cities just to help with loyalty a little bit. I think with the total population in Sanaa, I think we're gonna be good here for now. But just in case, I think a monument here is gonna help with the loyalty. It is so weird playing on Prince and having all of these wonders available. Normally, this has gone at like turn 25 on Deity. Like it's so ridiculous how many wonders you can still be build in a game of Prince. Now it is a bit of a honey pot though. Like I don't wanna build any of these, right? Like we're winning a domination game. We just need to focus on that. Right, so seeing all these wonders, just because a wonder is available does not mean you need to build it. Having a few loyalty problems in Anchor Tom, that's fine. We're building some farms down here. We're getting a granary. That'll help the population grow. This population here is growing in four turns as well, which will add a little bit of loyalty pressure. But Magnus is just kind of hanging out down by where we were taking over Saladin. So let's go to our governors. 
Let's reassign Magnus to Angkor Tom, and that'll add a few uh, loyalty points there, and we are good to go. <laughs> I wasn't even going to clip this part into the video, but that animation was absolutely hilarious. Oh, poor swordsman. <laughs> that was so good. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. The animation of that swordsman getting just blown to shreds by a field cannon. Now that we're here, though, let us showcase the power of the double hit field cannon core against these poor, poor walls. Just, just mows them down. Now, they are probably ancient walls with 36 garrison strength, which is really, really low. But still, like, this is such a powerful unit to just start mowing down these cities over here. Now, it is good to remember when we have our builders that we do have the Pantheon that gives us extra production and faith for strategic resources. So building on coal and niter and iron and uh, horses are actually kind of more helpful for us than they would normally be. That doesn't mean you should ignore all your farms for food and the like, but it is good to know that even if we don't need iron anymore, it's still a better tile for us than iron might normally be because of our Pantheon. Frigates aren't very useful over here anymore. It's going to take a bit for them to do any kind of damage to Gorgo. They'd have to come all the way around here. It's probably still worth doing. Either way, um, we're going to move our frigates away from here where we don't need them anymore and to a more favorable strategic location. Same with this guy. He needs swimming lessons a little bit, but he's, he's going he's gonna to speed up. Free builder, if I, uh, <laughs> if I may. Thank you. I'm getting to the point of the game where I feel like a lot of my cities have a higher population than they have good tiles for them to work. So in a few of these cities here, we're going to go builder, builder, builder. I think we just need one or two builders to go around to each city and just improve some of the tiles here to make sure our empire is kind of leveling up, even though we are abroad fighting. We are doing absolutely fantastic in our domination game. We are kind of mowing over the world right now, which is awesome, exactly where you want to be. Also, our science and culture are like at least four times what Gorgos are, so even though we haven't attacked Gorgo yet, I know we can kind of just run up to Gorgo and have a good time up there. We hit two kind of big break points here. We'll talk about them separately, but the first one we'll talk about is flight. Flight is really, really handy for a few reasons. First, if you are struggling with a domination game, bombers right here in advanced flight, these bomber units are the most power per powerful powerful units in the game. Um, bombers will just mow down enemy cities. We'll hopefully get to use them. Fighter units and biplanes, I think, are pretty useless. I normally don't even I don't even do it. I just go flight into aluminum. You need aluminum to build bombers. And so you go flight into aluminum, grab some aluminum while you are researching advanced flight, and then you grab your bombers. Now you will need a few aerodromes for this, so I've been delaying in some of my cities. For other reasons too, aerodromes are going to be great, not just because you can build planes in the cities that have aerodromes. So we're going to build a few aerodromes and we will talk about them once we are done. We have also unlocked nationalism, which allows us to make core units, which are these units with two stars. How that happens is uh, you will take two units of the same type. You will click this form core button when they are next to each other, and you can pick any two to combine with each other. There is a, there's, there's a lot of nuances to this, right? So if you combine units that have the same promotion, so here we have Battlecry, Commando, Urban Warfare, here we have Battlecard Commando, Urban Warfare, right? You don't really want to put these two units together because now you have one stronger unit, but you kind of missed out on the promotions. What you'd rather do is buy or build two new legions, right? Or upgrade these to musketmen and, and, and build two new musketmen, whatever works. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to combine units that have um, different promotions. Right, so if this has three promotions and this has a different three promotions and you combine them, the new unit will have all six promotions, right? So as long as they're different, if they're combined, the new unit will get all the promotions between the two, right? But if they're the same, it just gets doubled up or it just gets like slid together and you don't get any other, any, any other boost other than combining them. So for these legions here, we are gonna build new fresh units that have zero promotions to promote and make core units here. That way we still have two uh, Legion cores going around, but each Legion core has three promotions still, instead of one Legion core with three promotions, if that makes sense. 
I have started the business of building a few kind of naked, young, no promotion field cannons over in Buddha. That way they can come across here and combine with these field cannons here to make field cannons that get to keep their promotions instead of combining them together. We are going to augment our attack on Cairo with our frigates that we have moved into a more strategic location. So these frigates will help take out the walls rather quickly. We have an encampment here that's being a little bit pesky, but I'm using it to get some experience onto this field cannon, which is perfectly fine for us to do. This double hit field cannon isn't doing a whole ton right now for us, which is which is all right. We just got to get it into a position where it can attack. Place this Curacer on a farm so we can pillage for health. And I, I think overall we're in a good position, even though this is a little bit scary. Two frigate attacks, two attacks with the field cannon, and we are good to go to take Cairo. If you take Cairo... Oh, yeah, well, that's, that's him eliminated from the game. Bye, Saladin. Au revoir. You take Cairo, it automatically kills the crossbowman that was in the encampment, which is awesome. This field cannon is going to come and combine with this bad boy over here. And we should be good to go. We should be good to head up towards Gorgo. Just to do a quick little card update over in military policies, I have conscription, veterancy, and limesin. We are going to shortly take out probably veterancy here and put in professional army for a gold discount on all unit upgrades. We have a lot of units that we can upgrade to muskets and so on and so forth. So we would like to do that for sure. I have kept natural philosophy and I've also put rationalism in just to keep pumping those science numbers up, baby. It is worth noting just while the situation has arisen, like I said, there's so many little situations that might not come up this game for me to, to kind of help people out with, but you can promote your units in a city-state that you are the suzerain of. So we have become the suzerain of Geneva. I can upgrade this crossbow to a field cannon in that city-state instead of bringing it back down here. You can also see the army is, uh, is preparing to cross here. It's preparing to cross. I am going to combine these two frigates together just to show you something. I normally keep them separate for now just to cover more ground. But this frigate here has line of battle as a promotion. This frigate here has rolling barrage and bombardment. If I combine them together, since all of those promotions were different, this new frigate has line of battle, bombardment, and rolling barrage, thus illustrating the point I was explaining earlier about combining units that have different promotions together so the new unit gets to keep all those different promotions. We're going to combine these two field cannons as well. As you can see, we have one with no promotions, one with three promotions. We combine them together, and this new one keeps those three promotions. It is time for war with Gorgo. So you can see she has... We found Kabul as well. We'll talk about Kabul when we are the Suze of Kabul because Kabul is amazing in a domination game. But uh, she actually has units, which is a little bit scary. I think we're going to be fine. I think we're far enough ahead. These guys have enough promotions that it's going to be good. But it is a little bit scary that th this knight could do a lot of damage to us. So could this pikeman. So we have to be a little more careful around here. I'm going to throw these muskets on farms so they can heal if they get attacked. That'll be our first kind of play here. I'm starting to feel a little bit of a cash crunch as these units become more expensive. So I am going to grab some commercial hubs and cities that don't quite have enough districts yet. All right, so we've got our position pretty solidified here. We have two field cannons. This one here can attack twice per turn. So it's just going to take down the walls fairly quickly. Easy enough. This pikeman was a little bit threatening. I'm going to take it out with the curacer, though, just to get it out of the way. We still haven't discovered her capital yet, though. None of these cities are her capital city, which leads me to believe it is in this area here. But since she is the last capital that we need to take, we just need to head straight there. So if we know it's not here, I'm just going to skip Ephesius altogether. We're just going to head straight to where we think her capital might be. Heading down to mobilization will allow us to do the same thing we did with cores, combining two units together, but this time you can combine a third unit to a core to make an army. So it's 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 triple powerful. I'm gonna move my spy to Nassos here and see if it gives me vision of her capital city. It probably won't, but it might. We'll see. Just a little cheeky way to try and get vision I don't have. What a weird tile for that to reveal. Not helpful though. <laughs> We have hit a golden age. I think at this point, monumentality is going to be the best for us. Um, we have so much faith kind of built up, and we have 100 faith per turn just from holy sites we've managed to take on our conquest. The monumentality is perfect. That'll allow me to head to some cities and buy builders, settlers, and traders with faith. 
Just gonna grab builders and some cities here that can probably use them. We have enough faith to buy a few. I'm probably not gonna focus on buying settlers. I think at this point in the game, um, if we weren't gonna win in the next probably 10, 15 turns, then you'd buy a few settlers here. You'd send them over here. There's a lot of great cities to settle if you were still playing another victory type. If we reveal the capital of Gorgo here in a minute, we probably won't be buying settlers. You gotta feel bad for poor Corinth here. It just doesn't even stand the slightest iota of a chance. One day. One day. But today's not that day. That's unfortunate. We got a free builder. I'm just gonna get rid of this city. We don't need Corinth for any reason. I think this will be the capital right in here. We're getting towards advanced flight here, and I don't have any aluminum, and I don't think there is any in the Empire. Can't reach that. It has to be within three tiles of a city. Can't reach that. Oh, Cairo's got some. We're good. Patton has got two. Okay, we're good. We're good. We have lots of we have lots of uh, aluminum. I lied. I lied. I lied. Everything's fine. Everything is good. We have lots of aluminum. There we go. We're all good. Scratch it. Cut it. My bad. All right, so we know Argos is in the capital. These two guys can just take Argos, though. So the rest of us are going to head to Ephesius. There's no walls here. So we're just going to take Ephesius out really fast, and hopefully we can find her capital soon. Also, free settler, question mark? What? Very odd place for your settler to go if you're trying to not get it stolen. Um, I guess we'll take this settler. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what her plan was with it. I don't think we're going to settle the city, but... But we, we could. We could hypothetically settle a city right now. Double hit on Ephesius. Take with the musket. I'm actually going to pillage this first. I'm going to heal before we take with the musket because I'm going to be raising this city. Normally, I would keep a city like this. It's a good city, good districts. We're in a golden age. They're in a dark age. But we're just trying to race down to her, her capital. And the less places and the less resources she has available... It's awesome for us, so I don't think we need to keep this city. We can actually settle a city here and just call it like, ha ha ha, Gorgo. And there's a lot, still a lot of loyalty pressure. She's doing aight. She's doing all right. All right, no more Argos. Where is the capital? There it is. There it is. We found it. Now that we have advanced flight, I'm just going to circle back and grab a lot of these units that I was missing before. We're already so far ahead, I don't need to push even farther ahead. I think we're good to just try and set up our units and, and take Sparta. So Gorgo has built a knight in here. This happened a few turns ago, but this strategy seems to be working, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is anyway. So right here, I have this frigate. I didn't really know what to do with it, but I thought maybe if I have the frigate continue to attack the city, even though I don't really need to take the city or really need to, to, to worry about it, that it would stop the knight from coming and attacking my units, and that is exactly what happened. This knight hasn't moved out of the city because the frigate is busy attacking it. This great admiral is coming up to turn this into an armada, which is like the three promoted frigates. It, so that'll be nice everyone else here is just pillaging everything while we wait for our field cannons to take out this encampment so we can move in a little bit closer to sparta and i think that's it for the encampment tis indeed we captured the builder now that the encampment is destroyed we can move our field cannons into here and attack sparta from the encampment tile which you normally can't move into all right, this frigate's taking a, a load of damage now, so I'm going to meet it up with this great admiral and upgrade it to an armada. It's not going to be able to heal out here. It's going to have to go to Geneva. So it has to be a city-state you're soothed with or one of your own cities to heal if you're on the water. All right, the field cannons are in position, so we have the, the slow march to win the game. We shall get there eventually. Probably three more turns. Starting to become a stalemate in some of these battles, though. Major victory might take that. All right. Yeah. This is fine. She doesn't have a lot of units helping her out. Um, this will be a minor defeat, but we have a lot of units kind of in backup on these tiles. So I think, it, I think it's probably fine. I think it's probably fine to speed it up a little bit, you know? Um, if this knight comes out here, we have this field cannon to intercept. I think we're good. These guys are just slipping. They're sleeping. We're not even going to get to planes this game, man. We're not even going to get to planes. I thought we were going to get to planes. I wanted to get to planes. She purchased a knight probably thinking that was going to be helpful, but at the end of the day, it wasn't very. I think we've got Sparta. One more turn to get the walls, maybe? No, nope, that's the win. That is the win right there. History is written from the hand of the victor. Oh, that feels good. I'm gonna pour myself more coffee. That feels so good. By your 
your actions this day, you ensure our people a glorious tomorrow. All right, so that is a domination victory in less than 200 turns on a regular standard old game of Civ. If we head to the, not the main menu, damn, I wanted to go into the game. Uh-oh. I'm going to cut back into the game. I want to talk about a few things before we go. All right, so I cut back into the game, and it wouldn't let me cut back to after the victory screen. And I don't want to go through it again. So let's just talk about a domination victory a little bit. So there's kind of three parts to the domination victory. And we won this game really early. So we only got through about two parts of them. The first is your initial army building. Earlier on in the game, you want to build a small army. It doesn't need to be huge. This is pretty much our entire army supplemented with units at the end that we are going to use to combine like this. And that's the only reason we were continuing to build units as the end of the game approaches. We wanted to combine them into cores and armies. But at the beginning of the game, we kind of focused on building a small army that would get a lot of promotions. We get a lot of battle experience and we get a lot of promotions. And you can see how well that served us heading into the late game. We didn't really need to focus on building more units because these units are powerful. They were ahead whenever we could upgrade them with our science advantage, we could, right? Which allowed us to win before we even got to planes. The third part of the uh, kind of domination win in a game that takes a little longer is when you start getting to bombers, when you start getting to military engineers and those types of things. Those are those are extra steps you can take if you are still in the domination uh, uh, gameplay near the end of the game. We'll talk about this briefly for a minute. It's hard when you can't explain it because the game ended. The next domination game we do, I promise I'll, I'll make it later on purpose to explain those things, right? But what that allowed us to do is not having to continue to build units in all these cities. Um, we were able to build campuses and theater squares and commercial hubs to keep our gold science and culture up. This faith is just faith we took from districts in the cities that we took over. So that's awesome for us. We were able to grab builders and build all these farms and mines. And so, one of the things I think that happens, we were two turns away from a plane, two turns. One of the things I think that happens is that people assume they need to build an army for the whole game. And what that does is it really delays you being able to get ahead building these other things that you are going to need in your empire. So I really recommend build a small but strong army in the beginning, upgrade it as you go, make sure you have the gold kind of saved up to do that. Get these promotions in here and you should be able to win a domination game fairly quickly. It's also remember, uh, it's also important to remember to focus on the capitals, right? We focused on the capital here. We didn't take these two cities. We didn't keep these ones. They weren't going to help us. They were just going to make the game take longer. Um, each turn would have taken, what is that, three cities longer. We raised a bunch of cities down here that we didn't need either. There was one right there, right? And so take the cities that are good. You can raise the cities that are bad. And overall, just a, a pretty standard domination victory. Now, I want to re-emphasize before we end here, I hope there were tips, tricks, and things you learned in this series of videos. But domination games, same with culture games, there are an infinite amount of scenarios. We did not cover nearly everything that we could in a domination game. There's so much more to cover. There's using observation balloons with um, bombards and catapults and um, whatever the oil version is. What is it called? I can't remember. What is it? Artillery. Right, so you can use um, observation balloons with artillery units to attack from a farther range. You can use bombers and military engineers to build little airstrips to put your planes wherever you like them. So there is so much more that we could talk about in a domination victory, but I hope for this series that you picked up some of the basic principles we're trying to go over, some of the basic things you can do so when you hop into a regular game of Civ, you can win by turn 200 and have that first turn 200 victory under your belt. It's also worth noting that the bigger your map is, the longer this game will take, right? If this was a bigger map, we would have two more sieves that we would have to take the capital of. So the smaller your map, the quicker it's going to take. Uh, most people play on a small map if you're playing on Deity, so that's just what I'm used to, which is why we're playing it here. But if you're playing on a standard map, just know this would have taken another 10, 20 turns maybe to, to make sure we get all the other capitals in the game as well. Anyways, though, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the series, like and subscribe button are there. Let me know what you want to see next in the comments below. Feel free to head over to our live stream. We stream on Twitch all the time, twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one.